Today we are reviewing algebraic expressions and we're going to answer the questions. What were expressions again? Because we did do these in fourth grade. How can I write expressions in number and in word forms and who cares? Well, you'll remember that expressions combine numbers and symbols, but they don't use an equal sign. So 6n plus 3 is an expression that means 6 times some quantity and then add 3 more. You've a second expression that says the product of 5 times 4 plus 5 together times 5. Once you add an equal sign, it becomes an equation, which is a little bit different. One way you might see an expression is in word form. And when that happens, you want to pay attention to the key words. And sometimes it really does matter what order you do things in. So let's take a look at this one. Subtract the product of 6 and 8 from 100. OK, where are key words? Well, I see the word product right there. So that tells me I need to multiply. And then I see the word subtract. Now, when I subtract, it matters what order I do things in. It doesn't when I add and it doesn't when I multiply, but it does if I subtract or divide. So I do need to pay attention to order. So I'm going to subtract the product. So whatever I multiply, I'm subtracting it from 100. OK, so that means 100. Take away the product of 6 and 8. Why did I use parentheses? I didn't absolutely have to use parentheses, but it'll make it a little bit easier for whoever needs to work with this, whether it's me or someone else, to understand it. The order of operations would have taken care of it, but, you know, it's just a little kinder to throw those parentheses in there. They can come in number form, too. And here we're looking at the sum of 5 plus 7 times 2. And now, is there more than one way I could write this? Yeah, there is. Um, let me try a couple. All right, there we go. And what you're going to see in a second is that one gives much clearer directions to the person working with the expression than the other. The first one I did was the sum of 5 and 7 times 2. The problem with that is that, do, do I mean the sum of 5 and 7 times 2? Like this, oh, I need my pen. OK, 5 plus 7 times 2. But if you read it differently, it might be the sum of 5 and 7 times 2. The expression isn't really that clear. It could kind of go either way. The second one is a lot more clear because it uses more signal words. So we want the product of 2 times the sum of 5 and 7. And that explains very plainly that we're adding the 5 and the 7 and multiplying that times 2. And very clearly, you get 2 times the sum of 5 and 7. Now remember, the fact that mine's written a little backwards from that doesn't matter because we're multiplying. 12 times 2 and 2 times 12 will both give me 24. Here's one for you to try in your notebook. Add 5 and 6, then divide by 2. And you should have in your notebook, we're going to add 5 and 6, then, that's a keyword right there, divide by 2. So first job is to add 5 and 6, and then we're going to divide that by 2. Here's another one for you to try in your notebook. Go ahead and stop the video and give that a try. Okay, here we've got two things going on. We've got a difference happening here, and it has to happen first because this is in parentheses. And then we're going to take that difference and divide it by 2. So that's what we're going to want to write, that we're going to make a difference first. One way I might have written it was as a direction. Subtract 8 from 24, then divide by 2. Another way I might have written it was half of the difference of 24 and 8, because you know that half is a signal word that means divided by 2. They both work, and you might have even found a different way of doing it. We'll look at that tomorrow. OK, so what? Why bother with all that? Well, if you can translate algebraic expressions, you can figure out how to do word problems. This next one is 
in your notebook, but it's written a little differently. I want to show you how these can match up. There are 17 boys and 13 girls in a class. Half of them paid for their field trips. How many haven't paid yet? Well, I need to figure out what I need to figure out. And it looks like the first step of this would be to figure out how many kids are in the class. Well, we've got 17 boys and 13 girls. And since boys and girls are the only option, that must be the number of kids in the class. So let's start by adding to find out how many kids are in the class. 17 plus 13. That sum should give me how many kids are in the class. But half of them haven't paid yet. And like I said a minute ago, half is a signal word that means divide it by 2. So in order to figure out the story problem, what I need to do is create an expression that matches it. And in this case, that's going to be the sum of 7 and 13 divided by 2. If you haven't taken a second to get that into your notebook, do that, and then we'll roll on with this one. There are 25 kids in each of two classes. If each kid pays two bucks toward an ice cream party, how much money can the two teachers spend on ice cream and fixings? All right, well, we've got 25 kids in one class, right? And then 25 kids in another class. So we've got a total of this many kids, and each of them paid two bucks, so that's two plus two plus two plus two plus two on up to however many kids are there. So each paid two dollars, and that should match the expression that's in your notebook. So then if we take that and move that into word form, it would be two times the sum of 25 plus 25. So it should be pretty easy. It's a very useful thing when you're doing story problems. So today we have answered the questions, what are word expressions again? They're groups of numbers and symbols that don't have an equal sign. How can I write expressions in number and word form? Pay attention to signal words, use them when you need to, and make sure things come out in the right order. Who cares? You should care. Why? Because you have to do story problems. And if you can create expressions that match the story problems, you're much more likely to get those things correct. So, finish up your notebook, and I will talk to you in the morning.